Now let's discuss the test statistic. So we're testing proportions. Remember for one population, a test statistic for proportion would be p hat minus p divided by the square root of p times q divided by n. That might look like a minus, but that's actually a times. Again, the concept was observed minus expected over the error. So our observed with one population is p hat, but with two populations, we have two p hats. And since we're comparing them, we're subtracting the sample proportions. The expected value that we're subtracting in a one population is an exact number, but for comparison, we are subtracting, we're subtracting a subtraction, does that sound funny? But remember that will always be zero. The theory is that if P1 equal P2, then subtracting a number that's equal to itself from itself is going to give you zero. And then the other thing to notice is down here in the formula, before we had P's and Q's, but now we have P with a bar on the top, a flat bar, almost like when we had sample mean, it was X bar. And here we have Q bar. So P bar is the weighted or combined estimate of population one and population two. Of course, we'll be using P1 and P2 hat, the sample proportions, because that's all we have. So this P bar is ultimately the pooled proportion of our two data sets. So our formula is x1 plus x2, the sum of that quantity is divided by the sum of the two populations. And then q bar is the complement of p bar. So sometimes we'll just refer to it as the pooled proportion. Keep in mind, be careful with this formula because it can get a little tricky. It is not the same thing as adding separate fractions. We want to add the tops, add the bottoms, and divide those sums, but you can't take one division plus another division. And just to kind of stress that point, imagine if we had two-fifths plus two-fifths. Now normally your x1 and x2 aren't necessarily equal, and your n1 and n2, although it's desirable to have them equal, isn't always happening. But I'm just kind of proving a point. 2 fifths plus 2 fifths, because they have the same denominator, adds to 4 fifths, or 80%. But the formula we want is we would take the 2 plus 2 divided by the 5 plus 5, and we'd have 4 over 10, which is 40%, completely different percentage than if we'd added the separate fractions. Think of it this way, if we have two out of five people and another two out of five people, what we're interested in is four out of 10 total people. We don't care that we had 40% and 40% to get 80%. And just one more point for probably overkill, but look at this, it might help you a little bit better. If I have two over two, which is 100%, and four over eight, which is 50%, well, if you just added the percentages, you get 150. So we can't have 150% of a population. So maybe you're thinking, divide by two to average them and get 75%. But I keep stressing, that's not the formula we wanna use. We want to add our two numerators of two and four, our two denominators of two and eight, and we want to be looking at six successes out of ten total tries, if you want to look at it that way, which is sixty percent, and so not seventy percent. But here's how I like to kind of describe it. I've got fifty percent of two over two and a hundred percent of the four over eight. I think I just said that backwards, huh? I did, sorry. So here, I wrote it correctly. But the thing of it is, think of this. 75% is dead center in the middle. But if I have tug of war, and I've got eight people pulling on my left side, and only two people pulling on the right side, assuming they're not freakishly strong people pulling on the right side, then we're expecting to land somewhere over on the left. And as we just saw below, when we average those numbers, yeah, we got 60%. There was a stronger amount of people in the group that only had a 50% success rate than that small population that had a 100% success rate.